Have you ever wondered what a shadow light is? In today's video I will be showing you cinematic lighting techniques and how you can make your renders look more interesting and how to bring it up to the next level. Hello everyone and welcome along to another episode about lighting techniques. In today's video I want to give, go a bit more into depth on how to create specific light setups. One will be the Shadner light and the other one will be like a high key light setup and I will guide you through that. This will be more a faster paced tutorial so feel free to jump back, rewind and play it again and, and go over it one more time, right? So um, we are in Maya today using Arnold, the latest version. Um, I have uh, a few examples I want to show you and which I want to recreate. I'm just using a basic model which I found from my mini factory where you can download all, the, all kinds of models and you can play around with that. Um, today's video is just about lighting so I will not be focusing about shading at all so let's jump right into that. So as you can see I have quite a few um, reference images uh, on my Maya uh, window here. This is the famous Shatner light and you can see that it's quite in a few um, um, images or pictures like you can see it's in the Lego movies, right? Super famous stuff and the most iconic one I think is, uh, is Bond, right? So this is a typical Shatner light and we will be recreating that. Uh, it's fairly simple to set up but um, to make it more interesting there's a few minor tricks which you can do just to bring it up from the background, right? So. Uh, we will be going over that and I think we will be recreating this here. I think this is from Fight Club and so you can see this uh, neon tube here is lighting his side. Um, I don't think that this practical light here is actually doing the lighting. I, I'm pretty sure they, they placed some nice soft boxes there uh, just to get this nice um, perfect lighting. And then there's a super strong uh, rim light here which brings him in front like it lifts him from the background, right? So this is how you make your images definitely stand out more. And I'll, I'll be just showing you a few techniques of uh, how, to, how to do that. And I think uh, let, why not just start off with that, right? So um, let's just move my little window here to the side. And um, you can see my character here on the left is from The Mandalorian. Uh, a new um, TV show which aired on Disney Plus. Um, right now I just have my lighting environment. It's just a super basic physical sky and it's just um, there to just get some shaping and we might just remove that in like while we go. So I think the first thing is to create our key light and the key light is always the light which gives you the main light direction, right? And in, in this case here for Brad Pitt it is definitely coming from the right. So our, obviously our camera is not the same framing, but we will just quickly create a light source. Um, I like to always tear off those menus, so I have them always at my um, disposal up here. So create an area light. And it's important to have lights and physical scales. If you have two, two small light sources, your reflections get just too pingy. So make sure you have more or less real size scales, which I think um, this is pretty accurate here. And then also important is to not place your lights to your objects. The closer they are, the more they burn out. And if your subject is moving, they just very easily move out of the lights, right? So um, make sure to place them a fair distance away, which is just more natural. There's a more natural fall off of the light source itself. So um, why don't we just rotate the light and place it to the side here and hit render button and the first thing is obviously we don't have exposure so let's just bring it up to 15 and now we can already see that we get some lighting on the side there so this is the basic way of doing this and obviously this is not enough so we can go up to 20 and on the bottom here is my um, the viewport and on the top left is the Arnold render view so the important thing is now to place the light fairly accurately and you, you can see it's it's a bit coming from the top here so there's a slight downward facing angle so let's just move the light up a bit and then bring it around and make sure you angle it to your subject like that. The default um, range of an area light is 180 degrees right and you want to angle it down so you just have a focus beam like pretty much like a spotlight and soft boxes on set do that too they have these little uh, things flaps which go around the lights so let's just make sure that we do that as well we just bring down the spread so now 
Um, one is fully open, like 180 degrees, and then half would be obviously half of that. So this is how you can beam the spotlight or the area lights. Super basic stuff. So um, let's just try to get the light intensity as well. And let's just move it up a bit more like that. And so let's just um, try to dial this in. Obviously our shader is still super specky and I need to adjust that quickly. So let's just go for a more broader light setup. And you can see this light is a bit cooler. So we can introduce Kelvin, which is just a color temperature. And so if you increase the Kelvin scale, you get more uh, cooler lights. The lower you go, the more warm they get. All right, this is actually slightly green as well, but uh, we don't just care about this right now. And let's just place this a bit further back here. So we're just touching his nose and we can go a bit higher up. So this would be, I would say, the basic um, shape for the key light. And now let's focus on, on this rim light here. So I just create another area light. And it's always a good habit to, um, to name your lights properly. So in this case, I just want to call this LGT uh, key 01 like that and this would be LGT rim 01 and let's just place this one as well make sure you have some scale to it like that and then also bring up the exposure and just move it to the side here so it should be behind him because you just wanted briefly to to get on on his cheekbones and the back of his head like that bring it up and we need to increase the exposure. Let's just refresh our render here. There we go. And now let's just fairly easily place it until we're satisfied with the result. Uh, this would be way too much, so we just we really just want to brush it up on his on his cheeks here. And you can see it's super important that you have a nice key fill and rim ratio. And you always want to make sure that your key light is the strongest light or that's mostly common how you should be doing it. And right now, the rim light which we just placed is competing against the key light. So we definitely need to tone that down. And it's always good to play with colors as well to create more interesting renders. So right now we are using a cool and a warm color. This is typic typically the way to do it, or this is the most seen way, I would say. And uh, we just wanna make sure that we match our reference right now. So. Um, a cool thing now we can play around with the temperature again and we can just go fully warm or we can actually go very cool which is more uh, closer to the reference and if you don't like the, the, the color we have on the top here you, you're not forced to use temperature like Kelvin you can just disable that and you can actually just use a color um, until you're satisfied with uh, the result so I think we go for like a subtle teal green color uh, let's just dial this down a bit more And we can see now that for Brad Pitt now, we, he also, because he has this, these spikes, spiky hairs, you can see that the rim light catches those very nicely. Obviously our character does not have that. A cool trick now is you should not be just leaving it as it is right now because uh, we just want to create more interesting renders. So another cool trick is if you just create a really subtle fill light or like an up light, which will just bring more features of his face. So let's just create one more area light here. Uh, make sure we place it fairly close to him, but underneath. Let's say it's a it's a bounce card, which I have on set, like these big reflectors or something, just lighting up into his face. So let's just move this guy over like that. And let's just bring in some lighting. Let's go maybe on 15. All right, let's go a bit more. And we can make a smaller light source to create harsher shadows. So small light source, harsh shadows, big lights, soft shadows. That's pretty much how it works. Uh, all right, so let's just move this over. Something like that. And you can see now it's casting some shadows on his chin, which is very, fairly interesting. I think it's a bit too strong. We just want to really subtly bring this light in just to make it a bit more interesting. And you can see now um, this light which we just added just gives this nice read on his face it's not really bright you don't really uh, it's not really interfering but it helps you read his facial expression like you can see the light underneath his cheekbones and everything so this is 
a quick way to create more interesting renders. Like if you want to present your stuff for your show reels or your art station uh, portfolios, like these basic setups are like gold. It looks really a lot better than just placing one light there and be done with that, right? Right, so the next one is obviously the Shatner light. <clears throat> and essentially what it is, it's, it's pretty much a spotlight which is in his face. And it's it's not not much more than that, but we have a few tricks to to soften the edges and to just place it a bit nicer. So and you can see it's in Lego movies. It's pretty much a common light to um, to give focus to your character to to like say oh he's he's mean or he wants to say something very important or whatever. So these kind of things help quite a lot to bring out your um, characters. All right. So let's just focus on which one should we try to do. Let's just try go for that Lego guy, right? So you can see there's this really hot light beam in his face going over his hands. And then you have this rim light again and another kick light. Kick light is like, like small placed highlights, which just helps again to lift your characters from the backgrounds, right? So um, let's just uh, move this light fairly quickly in here. Call this uh, LGT bounce 01. And let's just group all of these lights and call them, I don't know, light setup A. And now I'm just creating an empty group here, control G, drop it in my light group, and we just call this light setup B set up like that. So now I have two light setups. And in this one, we will just be creating this uh, Shatner light. Um, we just want to extract our ENV here. So we just have a global, just a, like an ambient fill light, which just brings some lighting overall so we don't have pure blacks. All right, so let's hide light setup A and hit render. And now you can see we just have our ambient lighting. And this is, it just helps. It, it might be too bright for our light setup B. So we can just tone that down by like a quarter stop maybe. This is not updating half a stop. So it just, it's just a bit darker now, right? All right, so the first thing, let's just first create the rim and the kicker lights. So let's add one area light and another one. And let's just rename them quickly. LGT rim 02 and LGT kick light 01. All right, these two lights will be our main lights, which just give some shaping. And you can also see there's another light. It's not just the Shatner spotlight. There's also some kind of uh, in-camera reflection light. Let's see if we can create those two guys. All right, let's just scale both lights up and just move them somewhat. All right, so the rim light, you can also uh, do like look through selected, which is also sometimes helpful. Um, it just helps you placing the lights. So the rim light is pretty much from here, I would say. Let's just bring up the exposure for the rim. You can see already we're getting somewhere, right? So let's just go 15 here. So that's our rim, pretty much the same as we just had like that. We just want to maybe go a bit higher just to get a bit more different read on him. So this would be that. And now let's create this super hot pingy on his on his forehead there. So for, for that, what we can do is um, just make the light source a bit smaller. And then let's look through that light and frame it again and just move it to the back of his head like this and boost up the exposure. Let's try 20. And you can see now it's filling up his, his sides as well. So we need to place it a bit nicer. It needs to be in the back and top without trying to shadow his uh, shoulder. So what we can do now is we can just introduce a light filter or like a gobo or like a blocker, whatever you want to call it. And just uh, to get like fade off this shoulder piece here. So let's go to perspective mode. You can see this is the thing. Uh, we can either create a light filter here, like a blocker. Um, oh, let's just do that. Let's see if we can get this working. So light blocker and we want it to be a plane, wanted some density and wherever this is, just fill, scale it up. And you can see now 
this plane is now blocking the light source. So if I um, move it in front here, you can see now it's blocking him. So if I move it down, you get light on his shoulder and then it slowly fades out. Okay, we can move it a bit closer. Okay, so now we just have the light on his, on his helmet or whatever it is on the top here. So that's exactly what we want. And the next one would be now with the famous Shatner light, right? So let's just create another area light and um, make this not too big like this maybe and just this one is more it feels like it's a bit side lit right so um, we can just place it as well on the side here like that and we want it to be horizontal so we just want to scale down uh, the box here and let's just bring on the spread quite a bit and then boost the exposure let's try 18 and move it like that and just make it even smaller in the spread. And you can see now we have this super hot light beam. And I, th I still think we are a bit too big here on the light source. Like that. So we're fairly close now to what we want to achieve. Obviously, we are way too bright. And you can see now this, what this effect is. You can also place these lights by just using um, some blockers or barn door filters to just get the look you want. And we just want to bring it over a bit more. Right now it's just on his um, on his right side. So let's just rotate it like that. So now let's just go a bit up maybe and just place it. So you can see now this shaft of light. It's just in his face, which is very cool. We can make it even a bit smaller. Maybe not as small. Let's try all five. Okay. You can see we get super hot shadows. And that's just because the light source is small. We can try to scale it up a bit. And then we can reduce it, the spread a bit more. Something like that. And you can see now we get this nice light beam on, on his face. And this is just giving you the like, oh, look at this guy now. He's He's very uh, important now to the story or whatever. So this is what you would call a typical uh, Shatner light. And you can also uh, make the light round to soften out the edges even more. You soften edge to create a really softy, soft boxy feeling to this. And then again, you can play with colors, right? So right now we don't have any, any colors. We can uh, introduce some kind of warmth to the, the main Shatner light, some yellow, and then the key, uh, sorry, the rim light would be like a strong blue like that and then the sun is pretty much white and again uh, I think uh, what I like to emphasize is that we just add another light just to shape him because you can see his torso is uh, very flat and it's not super interesting so what always helps is if you just create a few more lights just to help shaping your, your assets, right? It's super important that everything has roundness to it. It's not, you don't want anything flat and unappealing. So uh, keep that in mind when you do your renders as well. So let's just boost this guy up to 15. Maybe place it to the side here. And you can see it, it's, it just helps to, to bring some shaping. And now you can see his, whatever it is, his, his belts and whatever, just bring it up, make it more interesting. And I think one more light we want to add is this kind of fill, which we had previously as well, which is like an up light, which just helps um, make him more interesting or more meaner looking. So all these things are like, I, I'm not saying it's you have to do it for every render you do, but it just helps you spend some time on these things just to, to, to make your renders more interesting and bring them above the average render you see online, right? It's, this is just all I want to teach you with this course or this episode, um, just that you have a bit more, I don't know, more appealing looking renders and just helping you to create your portfolio and, and, and the need you might need to apply somewhere and you want to showcase uh, or you want to apply for a lighting position. This is the, the way to do it, right? And, um, pr present interesting light setups and, and companies, they like to see um, how people 
experiment how creative they are and these these kind of things um, just help selling the look so these are my final renders i just uh, regrouped the lights fairly quickly just to give you the correct order and naming of the lights or how it should be and these scenes will be available on my patreon account and if you want to look down you can join this uh, channel membership and you have access to those source files as well and it will be not for just this video you will get uh, gain access to all my previous tutorials as well with this video i just wanted to show you a few techniques how to get more interesting lights using cinematic lighting well, and all these principles are coming from the vfx set what you would do on film to create these interesting bounce cards and lights and whatnot and i just wanted to give you a brief introduction in these kind of things obviously um, i'm not using um, photo real um, objects or assets it's just about lighting today so obviously for your tutorials or for your videos or your portfolio you can use more sophisticated looking renders or assets to really shape them and it's also helpful if you have hair in it you get these nice um, looking um, glowy hairs and backlit backscatter of the hair um, hair fibers um, yeah, and I just wanted to give you a quick introduction. This is a shorter video as usual and I think it's the way to go. It's a bit shorter. It's just more information packed in a, in a shorter amount of time. So um, thank you very much uh, for watching this video. And if you like what I do, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and if you subscribe to my channel. It just helps me stay motivated and produce content for you for free. So thank you guys again and I will see you in the next video.